as we end our International Women's Day special with the musician and activist Alinda Segarra, leader of the critically acclaimed band Hooray for the Riff Raff. When she was just 17, Alinda left her home in the Bronx and began hopping freight trains. She eventually landed in New Orleans, where she learned to play banjo. Over the past decade, her band Hooray for the Riff Raff has become one of the most celebrated bands in modern folk music. In 2014, the publication American Songwriter named her tune The Body Electric, the Song of the Year. NPR declared the same tune to be the political folk song of 2014. Hooray for the Riff Raff's new record, The Navigator, is out this week. Part of it celebrates Alinda's Puerto Rican heritage. One tune, Palante, is named after a newspaper published by the Young Lords. Another tune, Rican Beach, has been described as an anti-gentrification anthem. Well, Alinda Segarra recently came into our Democracy Now! studios to perform and talk about her music. I began by asking her to talk about her life journey. I left home when I was 17, as you said. Um, I was just kind of like a rebellious kid that felt like there was this big world out there for me. And I grew up in the Bronx. I, I for some reason, just really felt like, uh, like I didn't belong here or anywhere, for that matter. And I really wanted to just kind of escape and see the country and get to know this America that was very, like, mythical to me. Um, I was listening to some Woody Guthrie. I think he definitely influenced me. And uh, I was, like, doing bad in school. I just decided to risk it and to go out on the road. Were you already playing music? No, not really. I was writing a lot of poetry. That's what I was doing. Uh, writing a lot of poetry, going to see a lot of music. I was really involved in the Lower East Side punk scene. Um, and I was a young feminist, you know. I, uh, so it was when I got to New Orleans when I started playing music, because I started playing music on the street there, busking and just trying to make some money. How did you pick <laughs> up the banjo? Well, I first played the washboard, actually. And, you know, the, the group that I met there was a lot of other young street kids. And somebody actually gifted me a banjo. Um, and I learned in a very communal atmosphere, like playing around the campfire and learning a lot of American folk songs, a lot of, like, Appalachian songs and blues songs. So I learned in that way. Did you really hop trains across I, the country? I did, yeah. A lot of um, hitchhiking and train riding to get around. We, uh, I was always with a group of kids. We were really just wanting to live on the outskirts of society, basically. We wanted to get in touch with an America that we felt like was hidden. You know, we wanted to, like, be in touch with the land, you know, just live this very a radical, like, romantic life, I guess. Political songs and music, are you satisfied with um, politics being expressed in music, or do you think it's not happening enough? I think it's just beginning. You know, I felt like, uh, for the last couple of years, as the Black Lives Matter movement was growing, I was looking around at at least folk singers around me um, and wondering where our voices were. And um, now I feel like there is definitely more of a push for us to wake up and to sing what's going on around us. You know, one of my heroes is Nina Simone, and I feel like it's definitely the artist's duty to talk about the times and to, in scary times, uh, to bring these these fears that we deal with alone into the public sphere, and that's how we can feel stronger and feel like we can change something, you know? So, can you set the scene for us for Recon Beach? Well, Recon Beach is a, a place in my mind, because in the, the album there is a storyline. There is a, a character and a kind of a, a play-like story that's going on. And it's, it's following this character, Navita, which is based off of me. And she goes into the future in her own city, and she realizes that she does not recognize anything. Everything has been so gentrified rapidly. Um, and she, she's looking for her people, her neighborhood, and she ends up at Recon Beach, which is where they all are. And so Recon Beach was used as this, you know, it's, it is a, a place in my imagination. But it represents um, what happens when people are pushed out of the city that they, you know, helped create. This city that 
you know, they're responsible for the culture and they're responsible for the soul of the city. And it's what happens when um, you're told, we don't want to see you anymore, you become the other and you are pushed out. And I, uh, I thought it was an important theme for right now, because I think it's really easy for people to feel safe and to say, oh, these certain people are being attacked, but I'm safe. But Recon Beach kind of makes it, it brings it into this personal place, saying, no, they're building a wall around you and, and all of your neighbors, you know. So that's what it's about. And tell us some of the models of protest and protecting home that inspired you for Recon Beach. Well, definitely the water protectors at Standing Rock were very inspirational to me. You know, I was just watching it and reading about it um, unfold and felt like it was so— it lined up so much with the lyrics of the song to say that um, these, these folks were saying, I will put my body on the line, I will be in danger, because that is how much I care about this land. And, um, and also, it's about protecting the land for future generations. And I think that is a theme in the album and a theme in Recon Beach, saying that, uh, that I'm going to protect this place because I want my children to, to have this space, and I want them to, um, to be able to thrive in this space. So, this is an album. Uh, it's not a Broadway show, but <laughs> no. some have been talking about the way you tell the story with this figure. Oh, some comparisons to Hamilton. Do you mind that? Oh, I don't mind it at all. I mean, Lin-Manuel is such an inspiration to me, for sure. I've been a fan of him since In the Heights, because I felt like he was bringing the stories of Latinx people into this very prestigious um, arena, you know? and. I felt like when I—I I never got to see In the Heights, but when I'd hear the songs and, and watch um, snippets of it, I felt like, wow, those are my people and my stories that I—you know, and my neighbors, and we deserve to be represented like that, too. So, I hope to put it on as a play someday. <laughs> well, I want to go to um, you singing here in our studio, Recon Beach. Segarra singing one of the songs on her latest album, The Navigator, yeah. it, which tells your story and your navigation through life. Yeah, the, the idea of The Navigator um, really sparked a lot of uh, concepts for me. You know, it, it asks questions like, who's driving us as a country? It asks questions like, who's driving you as you go through your journey through life? Is it your ancestors or your intuition? And also just um, the concept of navigating identities and obstacles through society. I feel like my whole life I was trying to learn, how can I be as free as possible as a young Puerto Rican woman? How can I, you know, divert these obstacles that are in my way? So, okay, one more treat here, the navigator. Today I feel weak, but tomorrow I feel a queen. I was raised by the street. Do you know what that really means? All this 
this hurt I've suffered It just begins again In a baby girl Or a full grown man Tomorrow will come Like the turning of the sun Over tall buildings Segarra. She's the lead singer of Hooray for the Riff Raff, performing in Democracy Now! Studios, um, The Navigator. And this is the latest album. But talk about, back in 2014, um, mm -hmm. what went into making, to writing, to singing Body Electric? Well, um, the Body Electric, at first, I really wanted to kind of respond to the tradition of murder ballads in American folk music. I feel like folk music is a conversation through the ages, and I, as a feminist, wanted to put in my voice and, and say, this is what it, it feels like to be a woman and to be in danger, and to be, um, you know, to, to be used as a prop, kind of, for a story that, that ends with, you know, my death. <laughs> and, and so this was my response song, but it also, with time, it grew, and it turned into a song that was about um, being dehumanized and also having your own body be used as a weapon against you, being um, told that violence against you was because you were too, uh, you know, sexy, or because of your race, or because of your, you know, your body type. And, um, and so I really wanted to just get into that idea of what that what that's like to be told that you are the reason for violence against you, you know, when your own body is turned against you. Let's go to the body electric. You're gonna shoot me down Put my body in the river Shoot me down Put my body in the river And the whole world sings They sing it like a song The whole world sings like There's nothing going wrong He shot her down He put her body in the river He covered her up but I went to get her and I said my girl what happened to you now I said my girl we gotta stop it somehow It's a song you may know, The Body Electric. It is Alinda Segarra, lead singer of Hooray for the Riff Raff. You've always been fiercely political and also personal. Do you feel your music shifting now in the era of Trump? I feel um, it's definitely a time to be brave. You know, I feel uh, like I, when the election happened, I was very afraid, like many people. And I think it's okay to say that I was afraid, you know, because I want. I want um, us to all share that together. Um, but to be, you know, you have to be afraid at first in order to be brave. It's really a time to, uh, to put all these ideas that I always had into practice. And I look to my idols, you know, like I look to Nina Simone, I'll look to Bell Hooks, I look to Sylvia Rivera and Julia de Burgos. Um, to give me strength and to uh, just continue the work that I've been trying to do. 
Linda Segarra, leader of the band Hooray for the Riff Raff, and 2014 American songwriter named The Body Electric the Song of the Year, NPR declared it the political folk song of 2014. Linda's new album, The Navigator, is out this week. Visit our website at democracynow.org to see our full interview with Linda Segarra's full performance in our studio. And that does it for our show in the special on International Women's Day. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Dina Guzder, Nermeen Sheikh, Carla Wills, Laura Gattis, Diener, Sam Alkoff, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Honey Masood, Trina Nadura, Andre Lewis, Renee Feltz, Mike DeFlippo, Miguel Nagara, Paul Huckabee, our engineer, special thanks to Renee Feltz, Becca Staley, Julie Crosby. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.